Law enforcement officers are responsible for maintaining law and order in society. However, the cops in today's video are the complete opposite. These cops were responsible for some of the most heinous crimes you can imagine. Sit back and watch as we look at their crimes and their reaction in court during sentencing. Brandon Boone Brandon Boone was a former Winter Haven police officer who appeared in court as a defendant. Boone was charged with battery after an incident in Polk County Jail. Security video from inside the jail shows Boone striking a handcuffed inmate with his knee before taking him into a darkened room. The inmate, Ronald Augustin, claims Boone and other officers beat him and broke his leg. Boone strongly denied he did anything wrong. At a status hearing on the case, Boone's attorney advised the judge he had been unable to reach an agreeable resolution to the case with state attorneys. State attorneys advised the judge there would be a large number of witnesses and he has not had a chance to interview all of them. Daniel Holtzclaw Daniel Holtzclaw was accused of sexually assaulting 12 women and a 17-year-old girl between December 2013 and June 2014 while working as a police officer. After hearing the testimonies of the victims, the jury concluded that he was guilty. Holtzclaw couldn't help crying his eyes out like a baby while the judge read his sentence. The court-martials had to support him to stand over on the bench while the judge read his sentencing. Wayne Jenkins Wayne Jenkins joined Baltimore's police department in 2003, first becoming a beat cop and patrolling the streets of Baltimore. During his time on the streets of Baltimore, Jenkins was involved in several arrests that resulted in the injuries of the people he took into custody. Despite this, Jenkins remained in his superior's Michael Fry's good books, and when Fries was promoted in 2007, he decided to also give Jenkins a boost. It was in 2007 that Jenkins became part of the GTTF, a new unit of plainclothes officers focused on targeting suspected criminals believed to have big supplies of guns and drugs in a bid to reduce the city's high murder rate. However, the focus on quantity rather than quality led Jenkins and the seven other GTTF officers to start planting evidence, taking money from the homes they invaded and even reselling the drugs they seized back onto the streets. A two-year federal investigation into the GTTF resulted in all eight officers and one Philadelphia officer getting charged with several offenses, including racketeering. In 2017, Jenkins was charged with two counts of racketeering conspiracy, racketeering, aiding and abetting racketeering, two counts of robbery, and aiding and abetting on two counts of possession of a firearm in furtherance of a crime of violence. Then, in November 2017, he was given further charges of destruction, alteration or falsification of records in federal investigations, and deprivation of rights under the color of law. When his case went to trial on January 5th, 2018, Jenkins pled guilty. Jenkins was given a 25-year prison sentence on June 7th, 2018, which he is currently serving at a federal prison in Kentucky. In September 2021, Jenkins spoke with a journalist from behind bars, claiming he never took money from Baltimore citizens. Eric DeValconera, a former Kansas City police officer convicted in the killing in 2019 of a black man who was backing a pickup truck into his garage, was sentenced to six years in prison. The fatal shooting happened on December 3, 2019, when DeValconera and his partner responded to a traffic incident involving a red pickup truck in Kansas City. A police helicopter had observed a red pickup truck driving and entering a driveway at the back of a home. The officers, dressed in plain clothes and wearing police department vests, arrived at the home and entered the backyard without a legal warrant and with their guns drawn. DeValconeri fired four times at Cameron Lamb, claiming he saw Lamb's left hand reaching for a gun and pointed at his partner. Lamb was right-handed, and medical records later showed that he did not have full use of his left hand due to an injury before the shooting. Eric de Valconaire was sentenced to three years for the involuntary manslaughter of Cameron Lamb and six years for armed criminal actions. Judge James Dale Youngs found de Valconaire guilty in a bench trial. He ordered that the sentences be served concurrently. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed watching this video, remember to leave a like, subscribe and ring that bell icon so you can see our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.